In this video, we'll just have a look at the definition of what a ring is. So a ring is a set R equipped with two operations. We usually call them addition and multiplication, but it's important to note that they're not always the usual addition and multiplication that we're familiar with. So it's a set R equipped with these two operations, such that for all elements A, B, and C in R, we have the following conditions. So the set R with the operation of addition is an abelian group. And what does that mean? Well, abelian group just means it's a commutative group, but namely, it satisfies these three conditions. Firstly, A plus B equals B plus A. Or in other words, that addition is commutative. It also satisfies that A plus B plus C equals A plus B plus C, which is known as the associativity law for addition. And we have to have the existence of a zero element which just means that there exists some element which we denote by zero, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's the real number zero, but we denote it by this symbol. So there exists a zero element in R such that A plus zero equals A. Okay, so that's the existence of a zero element. And also we need the existence of an additive inverse. So there exists some element which we denote by minus A in R such that A plus minus A equals zero or the zero element. Now this looks like funny notation that we have A plus minus A but we've just called the additive inverse negative A that's just its symbol so if we add the additive inverse to, or if we add an element to its additive inverse, we get the zero element. Okay, so these are the conditions for an abelian group, and that's one condition for a ring. What's the next condition? We have that multiplication is associative. Multiplication is associative. And this is the only condition that we have on multiplication. So what does it mean if multiplication is associative? That means A multiplied by B C is equal to A B multiplied by C. Okay? And you can see there's only one condition on multiplication, while there's quite a few uh, conditions on addition. And we also have our final condition that we have to satisfy these distributive laws. So two distributive laws hold, and we'll write out what those are. Two distributive laws hold, and those are the following. A multiplied by B plus C equals AB plus AC, so that's the first one. And the second one is that A plus B, or multiplied by C, equals AC plus BC. And those are the conditions, or the definition. This is the definition of a ring, and these are its conditions. So as we said earlier, for a general ring, which is what we've defined, a general ring, there's only one condition on multiplication, namely that it's associative. But for addition, we have more than, more than associativity, we have commutativity here. Again, we have associativity, we have the existence of a zero element, and we have the existence of an additive inverse. So, we don't have comm commutivity for multiplication, and we don't have an inverse for multiplication. Now, let's say that we, we do have commut commutivity. So, say we have that AB equals BA. What can we say about that? If we have this condition, then our ring is called a commutative ring. A commutative ring. 
for obvious reasons, because multiplication commutes. Good. Now, what else? Say that we have an identity element, like we have a zero element here. Say we have an identity element. What is an identity element? An identity element is an element in R. So say that there exists some element in R which I denote by 1, but just like I said before, where 0 is not necessarily the real number 0, this 1 is not necessarily the real number 1. It's just an element, it's just a symbol given to the identity element. So say that I have an identity element in R such that a times 1 equals a, and that's for all a in R. So say I have this identity element, then what can I say? I can say that my ring is called a unital ring. Unital ring. So here are two specific cases. If I have commutativity in multiplication, I have what's called a, com a commutative ring, and if I have an identity element, I have a unital ring. Alright, so now we'll have a look at a few examples of rings. So, the first few examples are things that we're fairly familiar with. So we have the integers, you can also say that the rational numbers, what about the real numbers, and the complex numbers. So all these are rings, and they're very easy, well, maybe not very easy, I mean, they're easy, they're easy enough to prove, they may be a bit tedious, but they're easy enough to prove. Okay, let's see something a bit more abstract that you might not have seen before. What about this field, or this ring, rather? Z adjoined with X. So these are the following, A0 plus A1 X plus a2x squared, and so on, such that all the ai's are in z. In other words, these are the polynomials with integer coefficients. Coefficients. Okay? Integer coefficients comes from the z here. So, I would say, what about if I said q adjoined with x? Well, that would be what you expect. It would be all the polynomials with rational coefficients. Rational because it's q adjoined with x. Coefficients. Okay, cool. Now, what else can we see? Well, what about z adjoined with i? i being the square root of minus 1. Yes, that's also a ring. So these are all numbers of the form a plus ib, where a and b are integers. Okay? So don't get this confused. This looks like it's uh, all complex numbers, but it's not all complex numbers because the a and b can only be um, integer values. If they could range over all the real numbers, then yes, that would be uh, the set of complex numbers. What else is there? We have q adjoined with root 2, that's a good one, that's all numbers of the form a plus b times the square root of 2, where a and b are, of course, rationals, that's a ring. Now what about something like this? All n by n matrices, so this is the set of all n by n matrices, where the entries, the entries are in Z, the entries are integers, they come from the set Z, that's a ring. Now think about this though, is this a commutative ring? We know that matrix multiplication in general, let's write this in a different color, in general A and B does not, oh, AB does not equal BA for all AB being matrices. Alright, so that's not a commutative ring. 
not a commutative ring. Is it a unital ring? Well, of course it's a unital ring. We can just uh, define let 1, which is usually how we denote the um, a, a identity element if it exists. So 1, let that be equal to i, which is, of course, the diagonal matrix. 1, 1, all the way up to 1. And since this is n by n matrices, this is n times. So really, what is that? That's just this matrix. 1, 1, 1, all along the diagonals, where everything else is 0. That would be a unital ring, because this element has the property of a times i equals a. That's the property of identity element, so yes, this is a unital, this is a unital ring. So it's not a commutative ring, but it is a unital ring. Maybe two more examples. Um, what about all the numbers? This, this set here. This is a set of numbers of the form n times k, such that k is in z, k is an integer. So you can think of this as all the numbers which are divisible by n. And the final one. Now all, all these we've sort of seen addition with them before, or they're very familiar to us. Maybe the only one we're not so familiar with is matrix multiplication, but if you're doing this, or looking at this video, I hope that you would have seen uh, matrices before. But what about z sub n? This is the set 0, 1, 2, all the way up to n minus 1, where the operations are taken mod n. Operations taken mod n. This is a ring. Um, modular n arithmetic, it's not something that everyone is very, very confident with, but it's it's not really that difficult at all, but maybe this is the last one. All, he, all these ones above, the operations, because as we said earlier, rings are sets that have two operations, and we have to actually be very specific how we define these operations, otherwise it doesn't really make sense. So here, I haven't been very specific, but with all these cases, addition and multiplication are our usual addition and multiplication. But here I've been specific to say that operations are taken mod m. Okay, and so these are all examples of rings. You can check them from, for yourself using the um, uh, the definition. Check that all the, all the conditions hold. And hope you enjoyed this video.